Obstacle course races. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Watch this. Our next caller is Tracy from Maine. Hey, Tracy. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for um, putting out such amazing uh, no BS content. I've had a particularly tough year and have suffered a tremendous amount of loss in a short period of time and uh, really fell off, fell off the fitness train. I found your podcast and you guys truly reignited my passion for all things fitness and I quite literally... Uh, you helped me out of a pretty dark spot. So thank you so much for that. Wow, thank you. Awesome. Um, um, so I'll just kind of read off what I sent you guys. I added a couple things. Um, so I'm 30 years old. I'm a certified personal trainer of nine years, um, much like you guys have stated. I do struggle to take my own advice sometimes. <laughs> I started running OCRs, um, obstacle course races, for anyone who doesn't know, um, back in 2014. Um, I immediately got hooked and since then have ran over 50 races, mostly Spartan races, but also um, Tough Mudder, Long Grand, reached the state level in 2016 and have podiumed and placed in top three for female, top five for age group, and top 50 overall men on my races since. Wow. Um, I've ran all over the country, including um, all of New England, Colorado, Texas, Arizona, plus many other states. Uh, I competed at the Spartan Race World Championships at Squaw Valley in Lake Tahoe and uh, was also asked to run the World Toughest Mudder Race, which is by invite only, but conflicted with a Spartan Race I had to do, had to run. Um, I took a couple of years off for a mix of reasons. One, having my son in April of 2020, but also due to the pandemic, races obviously weren't happening. Um, and now I'm finally getting back to my passion of racing this summer. I am 5'8". Um, all of my height is in my, my legs. And I've always struggled to put muscle on all over, but especially my legs. But since taking a break from racing, I've been able to grow my legs significantly and focus solely on building muscle and strength and repairing my metabolism that I've wrecked with the amount of cardio I did for race training. Another thing I'll note is that I've suffered from eating disorders and body dysmorphia up until just a few years ago. So the fact that I'm happy to be eating in a surplus and putting on size is a huge deal for me. My question is, um, is since... The majority of my training is running and I'm talking 10 plus miles a day, sometimes four to five days a week um, in season. I'm afraid I'm going to go back um, to being, you know, quote unquote, a string bean um, and lose all my gains I've made in my legs and all of my strength. So one, do you think it's possible to maintain my stamina if I cut back on my amount of running? Um, it does a number of my body. And as a mom to a one-year-old, uh, the luxury of going on runs as often as I'd like isn't really here right now and two is the possible to maintain muscle size when doing so much cardio even a thing um obviously what i do for training from races works and leads me to the podium um but with the amount of running i didn't know if it was even possible to keep any sort of mass and also not destroy my metabolism again okay well, tracy do you want us to tell you what you want to hear or do you want us to tell you what you need to hear <laughs> Uh, you need to tell me what I need to hear. <laughs> you know, okay, I'm going to give you a, a, a short answer, but then I'm going to ask you a, a couple more questions if that's okay. Sure. Okay, so the short answer is, can you maintain your stamina with less running? Yes, and I'm basing that on the fact that you're expressing that your body's feeling broken down. So it sounds and feels to me like you're doing as well as you do in spite of overtraining, which you see oftentimes with elite athletes, that they they are they're, they do as well as they do in spite of the fact that they overdo it. Can you maintain the amount of muscle that you have uh, with lots and lots of running? No. May, probably not, but it, you know, can we do more than what you did before? Maybe with a, a change in programming. So that's the short answer, but I want I have a couple questions for you if that's okay. You, you said you just had your son, okay. and earlier, in, uh, mm -hmm. you, know, you can say, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but earlier you said, You've had a lot happen, a lot of challenging things happen in a short period of time. Are you, is it okay if you kind of go mm -hmm. into that? I'd like to know what we're dealing with before I give you some advice. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, in um, January of last year, or let's see, let's go back all the way to, um, I think it was uh, July of 2020, I lost my aunt. And then six months later, I lost my grandmother. And then six months later, I lost my father. Wow. wow. Um, hmm. All very, two of them were pretty sudden. Um, my father in particular was particularly rough. Um, it was very unexpected and tragic. Um, so a lot of that, uh, I was just dealing with a lot of grief, um, a lot of stress, um, 
didn't really have a whole lot of motivation to do anything as far as uh, fitness goes and eating well. I was was kind of hard on myself, um, dealt with some um, guilt stuff. Um, so other than that, that that's that's what I'm talking about when I say I had a pretty okay. pretty significantly tough yeah. year. And, and in the mix of all that, um, because of the pandemic, my husband's job was literally evaporated. Um, so he had to change careers. Obviously, I was going through postpartum um, stuff. I dealt with some postpartum depression. It's just, it's been a it's been quite the um, couple of years. Yeah, that's, <laughs> a, that's a hell of a ride. Yeah, I, I, that's re- that's really really uh, tough. And I appreciate you uh, being so open. So th- thank you very much. I, I can hear in the way you're talking about it, and because it's so recent. Uh, there's still yeah. a lot of challenge and pain surrounding all of that. Um, so yeah. here's a deal with with people like us, because I'm going to put myself in this category, people who love to exercise uh, as much as we do. Um, we tend to use exercise like a bit of a drug. Yeah. Uh, it's a great therapy. way to yeah. Yeah. escape, um, maybe distract ourselves. Now, there's some positives that can be come from exercise during those, those times of challenge and grief. Obviously, if it's used in the right way, it can – help you stay healthy. It can help you be present, you know, which is, can be really, really hard when you're dealing with challenging moments. Um, and you know, gives you a little bit of time to take care of yourself, which, you know, I'm sure you've heard the term that you can't pour, uh, from an empty cup. Um, now considering all of that, okay. Considering all those challenges and that you're, you're still in it, you're still in it. It it was recent and I can hear (laughs) the way you're talking that you're still dealing with some of it. And the fact that you've said that you've had or struggled with uh, body image issues and and food in the past, I don't think it's wise, okay? So I don't think it's wise for you to sign up for another race or train like you're going to compete at that level. I think, objectively speaking, and I'm sure, and what I want you to try right now, Tracy, is to use the, I guess, the objective side of you. So I got to maybe put aside maybe some attachments that you may have to exercise or you know how it makes you feel in the in the temporary moment. Let's that, okay. put that aside for now. Um, objectively speaking, it, it's a it, training for an event or training that hard was a great way to push you over the edge. Which sounds like you're already there. You're you're on the edge, holding things together. Luckily, you probably went into this with a good amount of fitness and discipline, so that probably helped. But mm-hmm. uh, I think training for a race and training that hard, or like you're going to do a race. Um, is is going to push you in the wrong direction. I don't think it's going to be very helpful. So, my 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 the real advice that I'm going to give you because I did answer your question about the muscle mass and the running. Yes, you can maintain your stamina with less running, especially if it's more appropriate. Can you have more muscle mass than you did before if you train uh, appropriately? Yes, you can. I do think exercise is a phenomenal tool. I, I think it's not the only tool. There's a lot of things that need to be combined here, but I do think it's an awesome tool to help you heal and maintain your sanity and your health, but not when you're training that hard. I think you're just throwing stress on top of a, a stressful situation. The way, if, if I had complete control over you, I would have you use exercise as a way to take care of yourself right now. It, purely from that standpoint, forget performance, forget strength, forget you know how you look and the aesthetics and all that stuff. I would think to purely myself, restorative. How, what can I do today to, to take care of me? Because right now, all this other stuff is just, it's big and it's hard to, to deal with and there's other priorities at the moment. So I need to take care of me. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, Tracy. Sometimes that means you go on a 10-mile run, right? Sometimes it means you go and you run and you go run real hard and, and maybe you cry at the end of it. I've done that. You know, I, 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 I used exercise in that way. But most of the time, it probably means you're going to do things that are taking care of your body. Uh, probably slower paced, probably more gentle um, probably more mobility and stretching and, you know, classes can be really good for this, Tracy, a good yoga class where you have to listen to an instructor where they're telling you, you know, this is, this is your practice and not about competing. And I mean, a good one can definitely work wonders. That's just one example, but that's the direction I think you should go. I don't think you should right now, at least train like your like you were before. I don't think that's a good idea. Tracy, that was a a long, sensitive answer from Sal. I'd be a little more blunt. If you were my client, I wouldn't let you do it. Just that simple. If I, if I cared about you, I loved you. You trusted me as, as the person to guide you. And we had a relationship that I'd hope we'd have. If you were a client of mine, um, I would say no, no, I don't want you to do this. What I want you to do is to trust me for a while and let me lead what I think is best for you. And what I think that looks like is, 
a MAPS anabolic type of a routine, two to three times of strength training. And then the other days are mobility or yoga classes. So, and when you have that desire to go hammer your body for 50 or 10 miles, I actually wouldn't want you to do it. I'd say, hey, let's go take a yoga class. Let's go, let's go look inward and, and be quiet and alone by yourself and work through those things and not go hammer yourself in, in a workout program. So that would be that it that's, and I would want us to do that for some time until we worked and processed all the stuff that you, I mean, you, you're going through a fucking lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> and I would want you to process that first and feel like we've we've moved beyond that and we're in a very healthy uh, place, both with your relationship with exercise and food. And then maybe down the road, we talk about, you know, signing up for a Spartan race and doing that. Mm -hmm. But for the time being, where you're currently at right now, uh, I wouldn't let you. I would just say no. No matter how much I, you think you love it and want to do it, I don't think it's. I don't think it's a good place where you're at. Yeah, agreed. I mean, just and, and that doesn't mean it's off the table completely, right? That's something that could be revisited. But you know, spending that extra time to really focus on, you know, building your body up and and, and getting that kind of mental clarity again and being restorative about it, I think will do you a lot of good. Yeah, what you don't want to do, Tracy, and you might be noticing this now is you you might be getting signals from your body. That's saying, hey, that's it's too much right now. And what yeah. happens if you ignore that is that those signals get louder and louder. And, and, and you might, you know, cause a really bad injury. You might be, you know, what you don't want to do is you, want, you don't want to be forced to not move anymore because something, because your body just rebelled, right? So, uh, right. And, and so this is going to be a bit of a struggle. Um, I'm, I mean, I think, and I don't know if you're already doing this, but I think a very wise investment would be to work with a therapist specifically about this around exercise and how do I use it and here's what's happening in my life and I'd like to make myself healthy and not use exercise as a way to distract myself or beat myself up. Um, but you know, and look, you, you are a trainer, you know how you would train other people. Um, if you have any, if that clarity starts mm -hmm. to set in when you're starting to feel a particular way, separate yourself from it and say, what would I tell my client? And then that's probably the advice that you should take. And it's way easier said than done. I know I'm saying this like, you know, like, oh, here's the answer. It's a piece of cake. Yeah. This is going to be a big, this is going to be a big challenge. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a bit of a struggle. Mm -hmm. So I com I'm completely aware of that. So I hope that helps you out. If you don't have MAPS Anabolic, we'll send that to you because I do think that's probably the best program to run if you're going to run a program. I do have MAPS Anabolic. That's the only one I have. So okay, right there now. you go. I'm also going to send you MAPS um, Prime Pro because I think correctional exercise is something you can practice throughout the day. So if you really need to do something, correctional exercise is lots of benefit. And it's unlikely that it's going to push your body over the edge. You're going to get some physical benefits from it as well. You'll be improving, you know, mobility in ways that maybe you haven't in the past. It, it, it can be used as a very restorative uh, program. So we'll send that okay, over wow. to you. And then finally, Tracy, I'd love to have you. Are you in our forum by any chance? I'm not. Nope. I'd like you in the forum. Now, the forum, people post stuff all the time. It could be all over the place, but here's the real value. The value is in the forum. You have a direct connection to us. Whenever you're feeling challenged or whatever, tag us and post your question or whatever you need feedback on. Uh, you know, We typically will get back to people within 24 hours. So, cause I'd like to follow up with you. Uh, I'd like to, I, you know, I don't, I don't think this is something that I could just, we can just give you an answer and then let you go. If, if you haven't yet, Tracy, look up the prime pro webinar. Um, have you, have you followed the free webinar that I did? No. So I, mm -hmm. I, and so this week, like I, I'll go back to my prescription to you that I would actually have you just follow that to keep it easy. Like uh, I would say, I'd want you doing anabolic on your other days. I want you to literally follow that video. So mm -hmm. if you go to primeprowebinar.com, right, Doug? Correct. Yeah. Primeprowebinar.com. It's absolutely free. Um, and it's about 50 minutes long. And I walk you through like a full 50 minute, um, you know, mobility session from head to toe, basically. Uh, I think that's a perfect okay. thing for you to just work on. Throw it on your phone, put it on the TV, and you know, spend 50 minutes doing that um, on the days that you're not strength training. Okay. Wow. Thank you guys so much. No problem. Awesome. Thanks for calling in, yeah. Tracy. No, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, you know, this is um, one of the reasons why I value talking to people live is because had we not talked to her and oh, we yeah. just saw the question. 
then it would have been like, here's your workout, here's what you do for performance and whatever. Right. Here's your nutrition plan, all that stuff. Yeah, but without knowing like the real content, which makes all the difference in the world. Well, and that's why I asked her those questions because without knowing, I had to know that in order to give her the right the right advice. And I don't, I, obviously not a good idea to push yourself when well, you're already being pushed so hard. I want to say something, and hopefully Tracy, you're listening to the, the after part of this stuff um, later on, is- this is actually, and I wanted to tell her this, it's very common. And so we get a lot of heat sometimes for talking about, you know, the negative things of running and yeah. marathon runners and the OC. Signing up for the competition. But yeah. let me tell you, in my experience doing this for quite some time now, um, a lot of people that get addicted to or fall in love with these types of races, and this includes marathon and long runs yep. and ultra marathons, a lot of them are are using it as a way to distract them from other stuff that they need to work on. Extremely common. Now, does that mean you can't? You can have a you could totally have a healthy relationship with Spartan races and be badass at it. It's totally fine. But in my experience, 50-50, I'd say it's a it's a fifty fifty shot. If I get somebody like this who's like because she's like hardcore, right? You know, fifty something races, like no, ten miles a day. Yeah, she's 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 a killer, right? So I'm not talking about the person who does Spartan race once a year. I'm not talking about that. Person. I'm talking about somebody who trains like this all the time, right? Fifty fifty. That person a lot of times is just like somebody who is medicating with a drug or something else. They're just using exercise instead, yeah. and I have to work through that with them. And so. For the listener who, who who can't relate with that because they're not that, uh, this is where you need to understand where we come from sometimes when we talk about running because there's a lot of people that use that as as therapy or a way to medicate themselves uh, instead of drugs. And yeah, I do believe it's a lesser evil. You know, I'd much rather. I'd much oh boy, rather, can it be damaging? Yeah, but it, it can. It can be very damaging and hard to see because it's it's healthy, quote right, unquote, right? right? So. That's where we're coming from a lot of times when we're talking about uh, the people that are kind of obsessed with running and exercise like that. This is actually more common than you would actually think. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.